Stock Exchange of Thailand. It's important to Thai companies, it's important to companies around the region and to investors here and worldwide. Let me tell you who we have to ad address this topic. Next to me here, Kun uh, Badin uh, Unagun. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, senior Executive Vice President, Head of Sustainable Development for the Stock Exchange of Thailand. Uh, Kun Badin has extensive experience over 30 years in the Thai capital market. He joined the Stock Exchange of Thailand in 2010, but prior to that, he was, uh, well, prior to his current position um, as uh, head of sustainable Develop development, he was uh, COO. And that now he heads the sustainable development division, comprises the corporate governance department, social responsibility department, and social development department. And before joining the SET, Kun Budin worked for Bangkok Bank. And uh, next, uh, Esther An is chief sustainability officer for City Developments Limited. Singapore real estate company, about the U.S. $5.2 billion market cap. Esther came to the company in 1995 to set up the corporate communications department, subsequently established the company's CSR and sustainability portfolio. A pioneer CSR practitioner, really, with over 20 years experience now, and a committee member of the Global Compact Network Singapore, which is the local network of the UN Global Compact, and uh, CDL is the first Singapore company to be included in three leading global sustainability listings, namely FTSE for Good since 2002. Our sustainability report in 2008, I always push it to my CFO whenever she goes for a roadshow or IR meeting. And every time she take, took back everything and said, nobody wants it, you know. So, but today it's become a very sought after report. And in fact, 2016 has been really, really exciting on this, in the sustainability and IR arena. And uh, the, both IR and sustainability, actually, ESG integration has actually integrated very closely. And UMPRI brought their first uh, biannual meeting to Singapore this year. With them, they have like a few hundred of SRI funds managers who are in Singapore. at ESG data and performance through the financial lens, making stronger business sense of ESG performance. And that helped us to articulate the story, a stronger story to our investor. Next slide, please. Okay, in the past, we tend to uh, make commitment on a qualitative uh, uh, basis, or we, we build a, a better home for you and all that type of thing. But RR help us to quantify it put price tag to everything we do the best we could because investors love numbers, love data, okay? So, uh, for example, manufacture capital. In the past, we talked about green building features and all that, but what investor wants to know is like how much money, how much saving that it brings back to uh, the bottom line. For instance, we cite example like our uh, Eco Mall. Every year, it helps us save $4 million in terms of uh, energy you know, consumption. So all these, and the payback was 2.5 years, and now uh, the rest come back to us as revenue. So at least, you know, you, you interest the investor that, oh, there's really tangible benefits, and there's really something to bring back to the table. Yeah. And next slide, please. Okay, this is my checklist. We, in the past, a lot of people think that our oh, CSR is about writing check, doing donations, and all that. But now, we are not doing it anymore. We are doing it community investment. So uh, we still do good, definitely we want to do good, but we also have the obligation to make money 
and uh, create value for our investors. So we look at all this as a checklist, whether it adds value to our brand, differentiate our product, and uh, well, gone are the day that you just mitigate risk or reduce you know, operating cost. Now we have to look at one step ahead, that whether it create business value. Next slide, please. Okay, so when we communicate with investor, we don't just talk about like, oh, okay, uh, our green building le leadership, you know, help us build better home, greener home and all that. In fact, it does open business for us. In Singapore, uh, we buy land from mainly the government. And uh, when in recent year, quite a few very sought after land come in two envelope, not just the bidding price that we win it, but come with sustainable design, okay? And increasingly, we also experience the same thing, whether in Japan or in London, we manage to acquire very good sites. It's because we have the you know, common value with the seller. And uh, the, the latest one was actually Tokyo. They have the Sheiko family uh, land, which is in the prime site in Tokyo. The family pay a lot of attention on conservation. It was because of our sustainability and conservation commitment and the track record, we clinched the site. Okay. So uh, next one, please. Okay, we also share value with our, our tenants and uh, we, also, yeah, we use uh, innovative technology and all that, not just to raise our ESG performance, but like for example, the prefabricated uh, 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 technology, it also helped raise productivity by 40%. So that means you can reduce uh, reliance on manpower and also reduce costs and deliver your product you know, faster. Okay, and uh, uh, we also look at like um, data, like for example, uh, between 2008 and 2015, uh, our 57 Green Mark certified building helped to reduce energy uh, 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 consumption that's worth over $31 million. Investor, analysts love numbers. So in the past, we talk about green building leadership. Nowadays, we give them numbers. Okay, next. Okay, similarly, EHS, which is, we stand for Environment, Health and Safety. For construction industry, it's very important because stop work order costs a lot of money. So uh, in Singapore, the ministry work very hard. So whenever you have non-compliance of water ponding, mosquito breeding, or safety measure in accidents, they will, we will be penalized. So that is actually cost. So if we could keep our accident rate low, much lower than industry average, the analysts will know that there is value to it, okay? Uh, and of course, increasingly, there are a lot of uh, more and more regulation on energy consumption, water consumption, waste management, and of course, recently, sustainability reporting. Mandatory reporting is actually growing globally. So all these become licensed to operate. So no longer, you know, a good to have. Next slide, please. Yeah, okay. Uh, I talked about our SR history already. We started in 2004, and the first report was published in 2008. And uh, in 2015, we adopted integrated reporting approach. That helped us make really good business and financial sense of ESG integration. Okay, the last couple more slides. Next, please. Okay. My target is SRI fund. But increasingly, a lot of mainstream investors, they have the responsible investment uh, investing team, uh, they've been knocking on my door quite a lot, asked a lot of questions and, and, and all that. And we also uh, take note that they always refer to all these uh, global sustainability benchmark, not just FTSE and all that, but also MSCI, um, uh, CDP, and uh, you know, stocks and VGO and all that. With strong presence in all these sustainability benchmark, it raised our profile. Even we are operating in a small red dot in Singapore, uh, a lot of global uh, investors do know the existence of, of, of CDL. So that is something that maybe you can think of. Yeah, the last slide, this is what we are after, okay? CDP actually is the largest uh, uh, NGO uh, reporting the carbon performance of listed company globally. And uh, there are close to about 800 institutional investors subscribing to their data. Together, their AU, AUM is 100 trillion US dollar. I just want a little bit of the pie. We'll be very happy already. So with this, yeah, I hand over the mic to Gordon. Yep. Okay, well that uh, excellent uh, introduction to how uh, CDL looks at it. It's a, a fascinating example. 
a comprehensive uh, approach to to uh, ESG integration. And of course, I mean, for a for a property developer, it's a particular approach. And um, but you can start to see how it can be adapted to different companies in different sectors. Uh, Kun Badin, maybe you could take us into um, the surge of interest. with it has been a long day it has been a long day and please ladies and gentlemen you can sustain through this <laughs> one last session <laughs> okay no more than 20 minutes 15 or 20 minutes okay and then we, we're going to stop and party right? that's right you know, party. it'll be time to party uh-huh okay uh, I saw from the questions that you asked uh, Neil let me ask I saw my article in a newspaper. Really? You did your homework? I did. I read. I read an excellent piece by you about the, the about the interest of investors in the in the Bangkok Bangkok Post. Thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> by you, by you, you didn't. In. It was there. You, you didn't were. throw it away. Okay. In yeah, it was None of those airplanes going floating <laughs> out from the thing. Okay. At least you saved the environment. Saved the ink. You actually <laughs> read it. Uh, the question is, basically, if investor relation officer should integrate ESG into their activities, I would say definitely yes, definitely yes. Don't miss the boat. And as I talk, you will see why, okay? Let me start this off. I mean, we're all listed companies, uh, well, most of them most of us here. In 2006, there were five trillion US dollar investing in so-called ESG stocks. Today, in 2016, the number increased from five trillion to 60 trillion. That's more than 10 times in less than 10 years. Do you want that money? You as an IR, do you want that money that has been increasingly coming in? Okay? Even in Thailand, that, that's, a, that's a global number. In Thailand, five years ago, we couldn't care less about ESG. Let me tell you frankly. But now we actually have institution investors, mutual funds providers, setting up funds just to buy into ESG stocks. So there are demands for this. Okay. What has the SCT done? If there are demands, we basically create the supply. We, we want world class. We, we have 14 listed companies, proudly to say, under the SCT as DJSI listed companies. Dow Jones Sustainability Index. Congratulations to all those 14. Uh, they are top world class. Not only that, because we have about 700 companies in our market, what do we do? We actually, uh, and those 14 are all crowded, all the institutional investors from abroad has been clo cloaking to buying the, those shares. So we actually create another so-called list. It's called THSI, Thailand Sustainability Investment List. It's, it's basically a localized DJSI, something that we take the GRI reporting, which you guys probably know, Global Reporting Initiatives, and we kind of localize it. Yeah, we, we made it a little easier to fit the context of Thailand so that the so-called smaller companies that are not able to make it into the major leagues, DJS, can still prove themselves to be ESG eligible companies for either the institutional investors abroad or local investor locally here. And actually, we started off that last year. We had 
about 50 companies. This year is probably 55. Uh, it's, it's still in the infant stage, but I think the list will grow uh, as the learning will grow, and we'll talk about the learning curve of so-called ESG companies. Well, let's, let's look, yeah, okay, let, let's go to the next slide and just talk about that first, and that is the... Um, it's actually building the knowledge. Okay. Okay. Uh, many people of you here actually heard the word CSR, Corporate Social Responsibility. I mean, I've been hearing that since I joined uh, a list of companies 30 years back. That's no longer a buzzword. You know, everybody does CSRs. But what actually, what good does that do to a company? What good does that actually help the shareholders of that company? I can go, we do CSR, we go, you know, paint buildings. We, we go mow the lawn. You know, we, we, we go build stuff. Don't You become more like a staff get-together party. And it happened once a year. You know, we do good. Once a year, we go do, let's go do something together, socially. At least it looked good socially. But actually, having sat in a list of companies that said, how much did you spend on your CSR? Because that's, that's quite a lot of money. And it's not contributing into profitability of the list of company. Why don't you use that money to pay the dividend to me mm -hmm. instead? A lot the change from CSR to SD, sustainability. Okay. And this, this has become the buzzword for the past five, six years, since the UN actually uh, mastermind and basically back up the so-called initiative. Last year, our prime minister went to sign COP21. Uh, that's basically saying that Thailand is also in to this initiative, and we are going to become more of an ESG country. Most of our listed company will have to follow suit. I'm working with the SEC, actually, and into amending the rules and the laws to basically not force, it's, it's voluntary, but we guiding them to actually uh, having ESG as their strategy. You think of something other than profit, which is fine, listed company must have profit, but also please think of it in terms of ESG. How do you help the social part of it? What the SET did for the past few years, we kind of segmentize the 700 companies that we have on, on the stock market. And we, we put them in a category like, okay, you're going to primary school, <laughs> and you're going to college here, and, and you're going to graduate school. So those, those are the triangles you see up there. And we teach them as such. If you go to primary school, basically we're bending their minds from CSR into an SD, because they often, I'm doing a lot of CSD, I'm doing a lot of goods. And they're saying, no, it's more than CSR now, it's SD. What is SD? You know, it's ESG, Environment, Social, and Governance. How do you do that? Those are the sort of questions and answers that we, we does a primary school. List you're, of companies. You're quite literally schooling them too. You provide yes. training uh, to Every list day. companies. Yeah. You, 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 you praise our building. You saw there were three buildings there. The second one was is almost fully dedicated to listed companies, which we called in, as in, all volunteer to come in and learn this stuff. Mm -hmm. Every day. I the think the next slide is always full. The next slide shows some uh, some aspects of the training. Yes. You can go the next. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, so actually, we, those th three segment 
monetization of the, the, the so-called listed companies, I said, okay, the first one is telling them about SD. The second one, we actually built them up since they're going to college. They, how would they get into this so-called THSI that I was talking about? Okay. You're not a world class yet, but you know, let, let's have a local league. You know, let's compete in here. You know. We may not compete in the NBA style with the American NBA team yet, but let's let's have a local league here, and that's what they do. Uh, we build them up, and finally, if they actually can get to a graduate school, we actually fill in the gap. We call them in, and we look at the reports because it's it's. I heard about integrated reporting disclosure that you have been talking about the whole day. And those are the kind of things that the stock exchange actually, my team down there, thank you very much, look at it and see what is the missing piece. Okay, that, uh, and if the more you put in those disclosure report, the better we can actually help them or you fill in the gaps. Okay. Because we, we, we know we, Robico Sam, who actually does all this, for NYSE, actually we talk to them constantly and bas basically use the same technique in tutoring them to actually reach the world class. Okay, so yeah, so Robico Sam, the investment institution, very strong and socially responsible investment and they work with Dow Jones and Sustainability and Disease to comprise us to build those indexes. Now, um, Esther, let's go to you for a minute and uh, you know, one of the awards that will be presented this evening is for best sustainability practice. And in fact, when that award was introduced for the first time in 2013, CDL was the winner. Now, the, the, as Kun Badin was just saying, you know, this is about disclosure and it's about reporting. Um, uh, and, and it's one thing for, you know, a, a, a green de developer to be winning such an award. But how can, say, an oil company or, uh, you know, a company that is not in a industry start to get onto these indices and be recognized as a leader in sustainable uh, sustainability? Well, today the world is very different. They don't just look at financial bottom line, okay? And uh, I think two days ago, I just checked, uh, um, uh, there was uh, at least 115 countries has already rectified the Paris Agreement. So the whole world is looking at what is a more sustainable business model Whichever sector you are, you have to practice sustainable, you know. That also helps you to, without planet, there's no business, okay? So as simple as that, whichever industry you are, you have no excuse that I just ignore ESG. It has nothing to do with me. If you talk about oil, oil industry definitely has very high environmental impact. And the main thing is actually investor do ask, do look at your carbon performance and if you don't set targets and you don't track and report your carbon disclosure, your, your carbon data, your energy consumption, your waste management, um, you are not going to be on their good book. And it is true that it is proven that investors do look at the triple bottom line. Uh, it may not be 30, 30, 30. It may still be financial, uh, uh, you know, account for probably higher uh, uh, weighting, but increasingly, you know, carbon is definitely an important area. And in fact, we are looking at scenario planning, in looking at carbon pricing, and these are going to come to, you know, uh, add to the, the pressure of running a business. Yeah. Okay, great, okay. Now, Kumpadi, maybe you could now give us a couple of examples of how companies are explaining this to investors. Uh, actually, uh, the question you asked whether for the oil company, which I have the example of, but uh, the issues of each company are different. Okay? If, if they are a polluting company, they may need to put more attention into trying to tell uh, the investors that they're not polluting. Okay? But that's not all. There are other aspects in the supply chain we have to talk about the whole piece. Uh, and actually, uh, let me say a little bit about the supply chain, a very key important. Uh, if 
I can convince one of the major, major companies to actually. PET EP, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's the exploration into drilling oil and gas uh, for the Taiwan company. What do, you, what do you think of that? The first thing you think is, okay, pollution, oil spill, and so on. The first page, what you see up there is actually their first page in the report that they give out or present to the fund managers. They're actually saying, safety comes first, environment comes first. Okay? And they prove the statistics really, that they have been doing that over time. Before, what Esther was saying, the financial numbers. The financial numbers are after. Okay? So that actually proved that today's investors are not only concerned about bottom line only, but actually the ESG itself. Let's take the next page. One more, one more example. High oil company. Next slide. Next slide, please. This is a sector leader in DJSI. They're the best in the world at doing oil refining. And look at the first page. What, did it, what does it say? That they belong to Dow Jones, they're saying, advertising themselves, that they are a gold standard, they are the best in the world in doing this. Okay? They have oh, this little thing that you can't see that I read from here. Uh, their mission is to create high performance organization that promotes teamwork, innovation, and trust for sustainability. The second one is to emphasize good corporate governance and commit to corporate social responsibility. Okay? And then to be in the top quartile in return on investment. Then the, the little one down below, they actually went through the corporate governance policy that they have, anti-corruption policy, whistleblowing, policy and so on. And all this are in the first page of their reports and presentation. Not the last. Because then you go on and you see a whole bunch of numbers, the good old way, CMO presenting as an IR. So that just these two examples of the two large companies are saying that they are taking a look at ESG and sustainability series. It's not just the number that counts because year by year, we all know numbers rise and fall, but whatever happened, they're gonna stay here for the long term, no matter what. And maybe that's what the actual thing that the, the shareholders are looking for. I'm not gonna invest in something that actually bounces up 100% what year, and the next year is 150% back. They're saying they're making return on investment steadily and sustainably. That's inspiring to see how companies are applying this and also how investors are taking a genuine interest. Um, and it's green developers like CDL and it's like a broader uh, corporate community and with leaders like the SCT. So that was an excellent look at this. Thank you both very much. That was Kumba Din and Esther Han. Uh, please join me in thanking our last nights. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, as well, for coming to the conference and for your interest. Uh, it is now time for the award ceremony right next door. Everyone is assigned to a particular table, so make sure you check the lists you got when you checked in earlier to see which table you're at. Please go straight in. We're going to be serving dinner shortly and uh, getting the awards underway shortly as well.